So uh, let me take you back uh, from the RF domain uh, on to graphical system design. But before that, I just want to make one quick announcement. There is a channel emulator demo which is running on the same vector signal transceiver on our demo floor. So when you uh, move out to the demo floor, you could uh, I request you to have a look at the channel emula emulator which is emulating the 802.11ac uh, new wireless standard which is still in the making. Okay, so coming back to the graphical system design, we have the applications getting mapped to all these different targets and the software which is National Instruments LabVIEW plays a very, very key and pivotal role. That is the binding glue between all of these different elements which, which have to come together to help you build either a test, control, or a measurement system, right? So let me go ahead and quickly take you through, you know, how much innovation we are doing with LabVIEW. Over the years, uh, you know, we've been consistently investing heavily on making sure that we have LabVIEW scale up to different, different heights. Based on those, uh, you know, industry and economic situations, we try to incorporate features and capabilities onto LabVIEW to help you utilize it to the best possible capabilities. And at National Instruments, we want to bring in the latest in these off-the-shelf technologies to you. And hence, we will continue investing in these platforms to make it better for you to deliver the required solutions that you have to deliver. Now, having said this uh, about LabVIEW, I want to introduce to you uh, Mr. Rajesh Ramesh from Cypress Semiconductor, who is going to come here and share some of his insights of being able to use LabVIEW for some interesting applications. Please welcome Rajesh Ramesh. Hey Rajesh, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, Rajesh uh, shared some really interesting insights, which I thought would be valuable for a lot of you. So let me request Rajesh to quickly uh, tell us about his experience with LabVIEW so far. So far. Yes, so uh, uh, what I'm going to say is uh, what we do. I am from Cypress Semiconductors, and we do programmable mixed signal, programmable silicon, which is used to actually address a lot of interesting customers, uh, essentially touchscreen applications, CapSense, capacitive sensing. That's what we do. And I actually run uh, two groups within Cypress. I run the group which does engineering on hardware boards, which are called development kits. And then I run another group, which is for silicon validation. And we use LabVIEW in the place where we do silicon validation. And the, and the power of LabVIEW where we have uh, used on the validation side is where we have a completely graphical systems design being able to validate uh, silicon. And then the ability of its rich interface to instruments is something that has actually powered us tremendously. That's great. So I'm sure you would have faced quite a lot of challenges before uh, you moved on to this platform. So can you explain to us some challenge that you faced? And then we will get on to how you were able to solve that in the next uh, discussion. Sure. So one of the very interesting problems for validation of silicon is um, what is called as mode transition validation. And as I said, Cypress actually manufactures programmable systems on chips. This is essentially an FPGA with a microcontroller, both together. And this provides programmable analog, programmable digital, and programmable interconnect. What that means is you have a small beast which is extremely programmable, extremely configurable. And then to, the ability for us to validate that kind of a system involves a lot of test cases that need to be executed on this. And one of the important modules is called as mode transition validation. Mode transition validation is where you actually test this across power modes. Essentially, when you go from active to sleep, sleep to hibernate, and then you do this across different events that you bombard this silicon with. Like, for example, USB traffic or inter I square C traffic, inter silicon traffic. You actually run all these events on this particular silicon that makes this entirely uh, very, very complex because of the number of events that you would have. That's the first layer of mode transition validation. And in the second layer of mode transition validation, what you have is you need to schmoo each of these events against time and against voltage, making it much more in terms of the number of test cases that it would explode to. 
and on the third level you have PVT. PVT is process, voltage and temperature. So you would end up with something that would have probably been done within 30 test cases would end up in the range of around 10,000 test cases. Wow. And that's, that's what where we actually feel we used LabVIEW and then we're able to solve this very well. Okay. So you use LabVIEW to do all these different types of validation and characterization tests, right? So can you share with us, how did you go about doing this? How much time did you take really to get this system built? Sure. So what we have done, uh, just to kind of go back in time, uh, around November of last year, uh, we had a very uh, small team of around eight engineers, which we actually ran them with some minor automation. And we actually took around uh, 12 weeks, that's around one quarter. And then we ended up automating around 400 test cases. This was using LabVIEW not to its fullest extent, not using the NI hardware. And now, uh, when we actually found out that to take 400 test cases, if you multiply 12 into 8 is around 96 man weeks, that's around 33, uh, uh, 33 test cases that you would accomplish in one particular week, with one person actually doing around four test cases uh, in the entire week. Now, if you extrapolate, I ended up with having to do around 9,500 test cases. That's around 23 times of what the problem I had solved in 12 weeks. So around somewhere in the middle, around February or uh, January time frame, what we ended up doing is I said that we want to go about complete automation. Complete automation to the level of collecting data, processing data, and reporting it out entirely into a Word document. Mm -hmm. So when we actually went around doing that, what I took in terms of the effort involved in terms of involving uh, the people, uh, we took around 62 man weeks to do the automation. And then we were able to actually run this entire system because now it is just one single button. You, you press the system and then it runs. And we are able to do this in around 33 days. So the scale of the uh, magnitude of what we have done in terms of ROI is, is just impressive. Uh, so we now deploy, we do not talk about man um, months or man weeks of effort, we talk about machine time. So I have actually got six NI systems in my office and we, I have deployed three of these uh, onto one particular product. So I actually get that done within 11 days uh, and something that is remarkable. And if you actually look at any problem in terms of validation, when you have to solve that, you have two typical limitations. One is the time to market. Essentially, you have a product on the table which is completely developed, millions of dollars put in to make a piece of silicon. And now the only thing that is uh, uh, preventing the company from releasing this to the market is essentially the validation and the characterization of that product. Now, that's one aspect, that's one limitation, the time to actually validate. And the second key aspect is key human talent to validate the system. Now LabVIEW is able to break both these limitations fantastically because with one particular key guy, you can crystallize his information in terms of validation, bring, bring it into a LabVIEW suite and then be able to run this. And then as we saw earlier in the presentation, it will involve some amount of uh, upfront cost development in terms of development as well as in terms of putting it into an automation suite. But the amount of investment that we put in is, is paid back immediately. So when we went through the silicon from star star, that is the first version, to the next revision, star A, with some bug fixes done, we are able to do this entirely within 11 days. So that is fantastic. That's brilliant. So I think in terms of uh, both the business benefits and in terms of uh, the time that it has you know, brought down from more than a year to 11 days is amazing. And, and we, we are really thankful for you to have come here and shared all this information with us. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. So uh, we have customers like Rajesh who invested in these technologies and is being able to use it to make sure they maximize both their business and their technical interests. I think with uh, LabVIEW, we are taking this to the next level by releasing the 2012 version of LabVIEW. So this year, we are increasing the productivity of a lot of our customers through the new generation LabVIEW, which we've released. Now, LabVIEW, like uh, all of you would, all would have heard since morning, is a productivity enhancement tool, right? Uh, 
And to be able to use it to the fullest extent, you will have to quickly put together your algorithms and build them, right? So I'm going to introduce to you a compact DAC platform which can take the power of LabVIEW and do embedded data acquisition at remote locations. Now this, uh, I'm going to demonstrate it with some interesting application which I have put, put across here. So here is an interesting machine that I have, and I have a compact DAC system sitting right on top of it, okay? Now, this particular system is doing the job of two things. First of all, it's an embedded system which is doing control of the motor and you know, doing certain control parameters, speed control parameters on it. At the same time, we have connected a few sensors to it, and this is also acting as a condition monitoring system. So an embedded system which is doing closed loop control and a condition monitoring system is what we have here. So let me quickly use the HMI, uh, which is a touch panel, which is again programmed using LabVIEW, to control the parameters on this embedded compact act that I have to ramp up, say, the speed of, so let me quickly do that. And it did the closed loop control, and it's able to run this motor at a higher speed. And here, you're able to see all the vibration parameters that are being measured on this. You could take this to the next level by incorporating order tracking on this, and you can look at the different order parameters being displayed here. At the same time, we are also doing power monitoring on this. So from the speed at which I was running it earlier to the speed at which I'm running it, uh, running it right now, you can see the power being consumed. Let me ramp it down, and you will see the power getting reduced. So a single platform with the power of LabVIEW can really do wonders with the engineering community. Now, so this demo we've completed. Let me move forward. And I've been talking about you, know, you being the focal point. We always talk about uh, these tools which enable scientists and engineers. And these scientists and engineers who are all sitting in this room, I'm sure each and every one of you have a niche in you. And to be able to take that and provide it to the rest of the world, we have come out with what we call as the LabVIEW Tools Network. Now, the LabVIEW Tools Network is the app store for engineers and scientists. And this has been a new release uh, with the LabVIEW 2012 that we launched. And this really helps people to share IPs, just not for free, but also when you want to charge them. Because we strongly believe that if somebody has some interesting solutions to make, you should be able to charge for it as well. So on the LabVIEW Tools Network, uh, this is one place where you could post your uh, intellectual properties either free or on a charged basis or on an evaluation mode. At National Instruments, we will be happy to help you get that tool, certify it so that it meets the quality requirements and put it up there on our website. Uh, so far, engineers like you have contributed close to 125 add-on tools which can quickly add on to LabVIEW it, it, you know, it is diverse uh, from just being able to do some simple vibration measurements to, to, to power measurements to some neural networks. So there is a whole bunch of different types of tools that our customers have gone ahead and posted on our app store. So this is the true app store for engineers and scientists. And we request you all to join us in this initiative and bring in your IPs and contribute them so that people can, across the world, be able to use it. Uh, another important uh, number that I would like to share with you is we've crossed a million downloads of these package managers, and we're we are really excited to see more people contributing onto the App Store. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank all of you for listening to the new products releases and the technical presentation. Uh, I'm going to request all of you to join us in this revolution where we are trying to take the graphical system design and enable scientists and engineers build some amazing solutions. Thank you so much once again.